all of our homes are called Witus, and that's the Wampanoag word for home. This one here is actually called a Niswitu, which means a two-fire home. Anything made out of bark like this would have been something that you would have seen inland. In a wooded valley, uh, the reed homes, which are the home which is just across the site over here, that's more of a summer home and what you would have seen out by the coast. These bark covered homes like this would have been more of a winter or year round home and uh, would have been a wooded valley where you could see 200 to 2,000 people living in it. So the bark today is poplar bark, which is not what we would have used in the time period. What we would have used in the time period would have been chestnut or elm. We first begin to construct the home by building the framework. Once the frame is constructed, that's when we cover it up with this tree bark. And it's put on here kind of like a, a shingling fashion, uh, starting at the bottom, working your way all the way around the home, overlapping. And then uh, once you have it all overlapped, you can see that we use a sapling and we tie through the bark with a tie and we tie to the inside framework. It's like a big bark sandwich. There's an outside framework that ties through the bark. We make a hole, drill a hole, and we feed the string right through to the inside framework and it's tied off. And it's very strong. We're able to climb this outside framework to get up on the roof. So there's no nails, no, it's just... No nails, no glue, it's all tied together. So you can see that the ribs here, these arches, are cedar and you want to use cedar because it's rot resistant and it's bug resistant. This is, these are the cedar poles right here. And we put these cedar poles, we attach long ropes to the very tips. And we put the cedar poles in at a 45 degree angle. We fill them in with stones and that kind of acts like concrete. And then we bend the tips together and what happens is the cedar poles will straighten themselves up right out of the ground. If we put them in straight, they pop out of the ground. So that's why we put them in at a 45 degree angle. And you can see all the bark here. This is the cedar bark off these poles. And often we'll take the cedar bark and we will separate it like this. And we remove the outer skin and we get it down to this kind of tan looking material here. And then we boil it in wood ash and water and that strengthens the bark so that we can tie the house together with it. See this? That's a cedar bark tie. So the strength is... I've been in this home in a hurricane. The wind blows up and over this home. It being a round house, there's no corners for the air to catch. There's no walls. This being round, the wind blows up and over it. No problem at all. I've been in this in 70, 80 mile an hour winds. No problem. This home is not complete. We're still finishing the very top of it. These beds actually would have come out, oh, to about the edge of the fire here. And this was like a big bedroom. So you slept in here, you stowed your possessions in here. You actually lived outside. So you'd easily sleep six to eight people in this house with no problem. We cook in here probably only in the most extreme weather or bad weather. There'd actually be two fires. So this is one of the pits here and we'll leave an opening for the smoke hole to allow the smoke to go out. So we'll leave one of these squares open. And then there'd be another one here and we'd leave a square open here. The, the room was open to everyone. Um, so it was one big, uh, one big bedroom. No privacy in the 17th century. You slept side by side, head to foot around the whole home. So you most probably were sleeping with a relative uh, on something that would resemble like a twin size bed today. This one here is about 20 by 12 by 12. The largest one we have across the site is 40 feet long, 20 feet wide, and about 12 feet tall. You built your home according to the size of your family, taking advantage of uh, what was around you, you know, the materials that were around you. So this is our summer home. It's uh, made out of cattail reeds, 
and there is actually mats that are uh, woven on the home. The way the mat works is the top part of the mat swells up like a dry sponge. And when it can't take any more water, it sheds that water. And that water comes down and it hits the gutter shape of this cattail reed and it gutters it right off the roof. So it's kind of like having thousands of sponges and gutters all over your roof. What's great about the cat and nine tail material, the cattail material, is that when it's sunny, the material shrinks and allows air to pass through. And that's what makes a great summer home is that it's very cool. There's 28 mats on here. There's 14 new mats that we make every winter for this home. So the mats that we took off last year are is what covering up the brand new mats that we made this year. So we're always constantly making a new layer of mats every year. The reeds are actually split up into individual leaves, kind of like celery. They are sun dried or bleached in the sun for a few weeks. And then they're woven into these mats. You can see this cord coming through here. And that is because we sew through each individual reed. And that's what keeps those reeds in place. You can see the edging of the mat. That's the edge, the actual edge. The mats are made so that they're uh, about 10 feet in length. And, and you can actually see the sewing too that goes through. When we make the mats, we sew the first two rows. So one row, uh, two rows. The third row, you can see that there's this twist in the reed. There's a definite twist in the reed. And that's what gets that gutter shape to the outside and what is used to gutter the rain off the roof. You can actually see the, the light through the mats. And that's what makes it so airy and cool. It feels good. It's the right kind of pool in here. The Wampanoag people have been here for about 10 to 12,000 years. That's a lot of time to experiment. The matting that you see running along the inside of the home here, it's made out of a swamp grass too. It's called bulrush. And it's insulation. It catches any draft and keeps that draft behind the mats here. And it provides a pocket for the air to circulate inside the home. They're woven out of bulrush and they're dyed with natural dyes. And they're tightly woven. A mat like this today takes a staff member in the area of three to four 40 hour work weeks to create one mat. But they last 20 years. So a lot of, of manual labor. It was said that a man or a woman uh, worked four to five hours a day to sustain a family. So the rest of the time was spent with their family. We were matrilineal, matrilocal people. So when we married, we married into our wife's family. We would go live with her parents until we built a home in that community. This is called a Nush Witu, which means it's a three fire home. So there'd be three fires in here to heat the house to about 70 degrees. These are supposed to be holes up here? Yeah, they're smoke holes. And what we do is if this is the smoke hole, when it rains, we will prop a piece of bark up at an angle and that would stop any rain from coming in. It allows the smoke to go out. The home is 40 feet long, it's 20 feet wide, and it's 12 and a half feet tall. It's the largest native structure built here in New England in over 200 years. Structurally, it's still pretty uh, simple with all the bent arches here. Is this the same piece of boot? It's two pieces, actually. There's one on one side and one on the other side, and they're, they're tied together uh, in the center. Yes, yeah, cedar is very flexible, very bendable, very pliable. Almost futuristic, like very simple, but at the same time very, you know, these um, Bucky Fuller domes mm -hmm. that he was making in the, back in the 50s that were very futuristic. This looks very much like mm -hmm. similar technology. Very natural shape, this arch is a very natural shape. We made longhouses in this area that could get up to 150 feet long and house six families in it. There'd be 12 people in a house this size. You can see the furs along the beds. There's only a layer here. In the time period, it was probably more like eight to 10 inches of fur. And there'd be pine needles and leaves and stuff on top of that, and you'd put the fur over that. So you'd see beaver, otter, 
deer, bear, elk, moose on the beds. We have baskets, natural materials hanging in here. Baskets and bags, they're kind of like your closets, your dressers, your storage areas. That junk drawer in the kitchen has a little bit of everything in it. Food storage, tool storage, clothing storage. What's the durability of these structures? And, uh... Uh, this house will last about eight to ten years. Okay. And then you have to, you would repair it or you would... Well, what would, you know, by eight to ten years running around, your, um, your sanitary facilities are probably not so much. Your firewood's probably dwindling in supply and your frame is starting to rot on your home. All good reasons to move. Would this make sense to do, to continue to do today? I mean, have we gotten too far away from something basic that works? People are too much used to all the modern amenities, you know, running water and electricity and, you know, all of that. We spend far more time in our houses today than a 17th century person would have at all. I know some native people would, wouldn't mind going back to the traditional housing. The Wampanoag lived in these houses till about the 1960s on Cape Cod. In the 1940s or so, it was outlawed because it didn't have running water and electricity. There were just some people who didn't care and they continued to live in them all the way up to the 1960s. They just built their homes a little further in the woods and didn't have friends over and talk about where they lived. So there are community members, there's members in the, in the Wampanoag community that remember growing up in homes like this, remember their parents constructing a house like that. Our guests are always asking us, you know, how do we know how to build these homes? And we know how to build these homes because we have elders in our community that tell us that's what the house looks like. <laughs>